Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. a serial entrepreneur and technical co-founder with a track record of successful hands-on open source programming experiences. He is the founder and CEO of Particle 41. Please welcome Ben Johnson. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with the CEO of Particle 41, Ben Johnson. Ben, how are we doing? I'm doing great, Gabriel. It's great to be here. I'm I'm really excited because I was telling Ben earlier, this is kind of one of my first really tech-heavy kind of entrepreneurs, so it's very interesting. But before we get into Particle 41, Ben, go ahead and introduce yourself. Who is Ben Johnson? Sure. Um, I live in the Dallas, North Dallas, Texas area. Uh, I have a family of six, uh, three boys and a girl, finally, uh, over a wide range of ages, 20 all the way down to four. Um I, I've been doing computer science and software uh, since uh, I was, you know, in high school. Um, and, uh, you know, I've had successful ventures in both travel, travel marketing, finance, uh, you know, financial marketing company. And then uh, I started a service company about um, 10 years ago. But while I was working on Particle 41, I also uh, built a small venture, a legal, ser- a legal services venture, and sold it to LegalZoom about four years back. Oh, nice. So, um, yeah, uh, serial entrepreneur. I love starting businesses. I love being engaged in business. But normally I do take a technical co-founder or CTO role in the businesses that I start. Nice. So let's let's talk a little bit about Particle 41. One, give the, the listeners at home, what is it? A little kind of synopsis. And then two... I would love to hear how you guys came up with the name. I read about it. I would love you to kind of explain it. Sure. So Particle 41 is an agile software consultancy with a passion for persistent com- persistence, communication, and inspired product development. Um, we're basically your engineering team or agile team in the box. In the box. We do software development, DevOps, data science. We have a really wide range of services, but we really just want to help you end to end, get your product to market or um, develop your solutions more quickly. Uh, we love digital t- transformation, cloud migration. These are projects that we typically get involved in. And uh, we just love crushing mountains of work. Now, how do you guys come up with the name Particle 41? Sure. So the 41st element in the periodic table is niobium. We decided to pass on that. <laughs> um, but, uh, niobium is an element that's often combined with steel in the, in the foundry process, uh, to make it flexible and give it an anodized sheen. So back in the eighties, nineties, you could get uh, niobium jewelry, which is kind of like pop metal or anodized metal, uh, jewelry. But we think, you know, adding that element of success that particle 41 is, we combine with businesses to make them stronger and more flexible. Nice. And one one of the things you guys primarily focus on is like maximizing productivity. How how do you guys kind of help maximize productivity? Sure. So I think we talk a lot about uh, visibility, uh, velocity, and vision. So we definitely want to make sure that we're choosing the right set of goals and working with our customers on the right set of the goals to get something in front of the user quickly and garner feedback through iterative product development. So we love talking about, uh, you know, what what are the objectives? What's the first goal? How can we um, move straight to that goal with velocity, um, but also with vision, making sure we don't uh, lose any side of the future or make sure that we are creating future opportunity. A lot of our solutions will be mobile first or API first uh, as an example of being um, just kind of future looking. 
uh, but not so much so that we still don't get you to market quickly. That's where velocity is important. And then our personal or our decided way of delivering service is highly visible. You get an update from everyone every day. Uh, it's very uh, high um, collaboration. You know, one of the, it kind of sounds like I, I actually interviewed a guest earlier, uh, kind of talking about value and value proposition, right? Creating value back to the end user. Sure. And it kind of seems like that's exactly what Particle 41 is doing is, is creating a, one, addressing a need and providing value to address that need. Does that sound about accurate? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are a, a, a more economical option for your product development. And we have the right level of expertise to ensure that you get to the goal that you're trying to achieve. Now, how do you, how would you start? You know, you mentioned you, you scaled several businesses before when you sold to legal zoom, how do you scale a business and kind of get it to that point where you feel a large corporation like legal zoom is wanting to purchase you? Sure. So um, my founder and I in that business had a really good strategy um, just for what, what kind of, who was our ICP, you know, who was our ideal customer persona and what kinds of things they would need. And then we did a lot of interviewing of those folks. Uh, we started the sales process probably a little early by traditional thought, um, but it allowed us to collect a lot of user feedback quickly. And we found um, both some B2B users and some um, smaller law firms that uh, we're kind of like a pocket of early adoption. Uh, and we just leaned into that. So we were serving small law firms. And then we also found larger companies that needed kind of the arms dealing that we were doing in legal services. So by finding, figuring out who that ICP is and really focusing on specifically their needs uh, and getting product in front of them as quickly as possible, I think that's kind of the success to go from startup to more than startup. You know, you're talking about the ICP, right? The ideal customer profile, right? And, and for the listeners at home that may be kind of new to this concept, what what are you exactly you're doing and what information are you trying to abstract and why? What what makes that information so valuable as when you're trying to sell a product? Yeah, so you want to understand their pain points, both, you know, where are they spending time? Can I save them any time with the technology or software that we're creating or the service we want to provide? Um, and then how can we gain their trust so that they know we're doing that uh, efficiently and accurately? Um, but we want to focus on what are their key pain points? Where are they spending time? How are they how are they having to spend money to address these, these problems already? And then how can we uh, easily help them? Uh, in the early days, you sacrifice price because you don't have as many features. So you end up giving the, the software away at a lower price or the solution away at a lower price. And then uh, as you increase your features, you also learn how to increase price. You know, that's another kind of thing. I think entrepreneurs, how do you kind of know what price to set it at? Well, you look at what your competitors are doing and you ask your users, you know, you, you ask them what they're willing to pay and you, you try to you know, figure that out. And then uh, in a lot of businesses, you can find a B2B play or you know your larger customer ICP. And then, you know, um, uh, I think I'm not uh, the best sales guy. I come from the tech <laughs> world. Uh, so uh, so what they've taught me is, is that you look for those large hunts that are probably longer sales cycle. And you maybe reduce the price there because there's volume um, baked into the deal. There's maybe more units sold. Um, so you'll lean in and, and really uh, negotiate price there while still looking at what your smaller customers are willing to pay. Now, one of the things you mentioned, you know, is interviewing your customers, getting, getting uh, acclimated with them, what price points they're willing to pay. What tactics did you guys use, particularly Particle 41, what tactics do you use when you're, or maybe your legal Zoom one, what tactics do you use to interview your, your customers to get this feedback? So, um, I mean, hopefully if you're putting product in front of them and they're using it, they're giving you a lot of feedback on what they're using on a daily basis. So um, you're listening to them and you're adding those things into your uh, your iterations, your product roadmap, and trying to really show them that you're listening to them by turning around features that they've recommended. Um, and this is really great for your early adopters because then they feel like they're a part of the process. They feel involved. 
Um, and so you're kind of saying, hey, stick it with me. Um, we're we're continue to add the features that you're requesting. So you have also kind of an exclusive um, access to your service or 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 a product. And and because of that, you um, you, you just you just ask the ones that you know will will work with you and give you the answer. Sure, we've done surveys. Um, you know, there are survey systems and survey solutions, and we've leveraged those from time to time. Um, but nothing just beats like a straight conversation. And then teaching your frontline people how to ask those right questions uh, to collect the information. Can you give us some examples of some of those questions you might ask to get some information out of customers? Um, can you explain to me what you do today in your current business? You know, so by explaining to them what they're currently doing, you get a little insight. You go, ah, okay, well, man, I really want to help you stop doing that because that sounds like a lot of work. Um, or you just, you get an idea of, of exactly what they're wanting to um, prevent themselves from having to do. Now, in your experience, you know, you've, you've mentioned you've kind of scaled and you've been in uh, kind of a serial entrepreneur. In your experience, what would you say has been the most difficult part of being an entrepreneur? Um, you know, you can have a very useful piece of software. It's like everything has to work together at the same time. So you need to be generating customer demand, customer demand at the same time you're meeting the supply. So you're really spinning multiple plates. And I think that's just the nature of it. Uh, so you do need a really good team. Um, to help you spend those multiple plates. And as the business grows, then each of those areas also needs to grow. You could have a really great engineering team uh, and they're doing an awesome job building features, but you need then a great sales and support team to bring that customer experience. You need things like onboarding software to ease the, the initial adoption. You need documentation and content that connects the supply and the demand and helps you with things like onboarding issues. And so um, I think as an entrepreneur, you're always solving problems and success brings with it that next tier of problems. And so um, if we, as entrepreneurs, if we wanted to do something easy, we would just go take a job with a boss that would tell us what to do, but we're not wired that way. We want to find our own path. And so we need to understand that we'll have to depend on our team to be more well-rounded and and hit all those, um, you know, solve all those problems simultaneously. You know, I really like that you kind of continuously hammer the point of needing a good support team around you. You know, I think, uh, you know, I had a former guest on here talking about, you know, the zone of, of your zone of genius versus your zone of competence, right? And knowing the difference. Uh, the zone of genius is something you're going to be able to do that you can just, you do, your time flies, you, you really enjoy doing it, you're very good about doing it. That's your zone of genius. And then your zone of competence is something, hey, you're, you can do it. You're, you're good at it, but you're not the best at it. And I think that's what you're kind of mentioning, you know, bringing in, you know, ex ex experienced team members to kind of help fill that void. Because I think another big thing where entrepreneurs tend to trip themselves over on is trying to be the best of everything and not realizing, hey, if I just focus on what I'm good at and then outsource the things I'm not so good at, how quickly some success will come. Yeah. And when I say build a team, there's some very, uh, you know, by using boutique service companies, uh, boutique service companies similar to Particle 41 in areas of sales and marketing, an entrepreneur can actually assemble an amazing team rather than try to, uh, rather than maybe try to do a bunch of partnering. Uh, you know, the, I'm sure we've all done a business, you know, we tried to partner with our buddies and see how that worked out. Um, you can also find people who are out in the market saying, you know, what I do really well is tech or what I do really well is sales or marketing or content generation or whatever it is. If you find those buddies, you can actually, they can still be running their own uh, successful services company, but you can kind of get the best that they have to offer without fractioning your cap table into partnership or even um, uh, hiring that full-time executive uh, at some growth and scale, you need to, uh, you know, you need to have really dedicated full-time members on your team. But um, as you're scaling, uh, looking at boutique services uh, is a great uh, way of of getting there. Um, we see this trajectory too with some of our startup customers, 
where they bring us on at the beginning. And then as times grow, we figure out what kind of roles they need in-house and then what kind of roles we can expand to, to um, keep costs down, but keep the focus really on b- building the product. That, that, that's a great point too, you know, for entrepreneurs to understand is you don't have to hire everyone to be on your staff, right? You don't need to have the creative design team as your staff and the marketing team and the strategy team. You can get those outsourced and you work with them and they're uh, like, you know, Ben's saying they're going to be able to leverage some of their strengths. Now, Ben, one question I asked, right, was what are some of the difficult things of being an entrepreneur? What, what are some easy things? Are there, is there anything easy? Well, I think it, uh, once you, um, I don't think so. I think easy is a fallacy of, of the mind. Uh, you know, one of the things we used to say, uh, you know, one of the things we say, there are no easy clients, which just means internally that even if we're dealing with a super nice client or super, super um, you know, things just seem to be going our way. We don't reduce our standards. We don't reduce our adherence to best practice. Uh, we continue to operate the client at a, at a high level. Um, and so we, we have the kind of, there are no easy clients. And I think that's the same with business. There are no easy markets. Um, and, uh, even in a booming market, there, are, there are different challenges, uh, than in a, than a, a tight one. Um, but I think the tight one means that there are weak, uh, competitors dying and, um, you know, the cycle shall, uh, cycle through and repeat itself. Uh, so it's just time to be strong. Yes, very true. And you know, you kind of mentioned, you know, like being like resilience, right? Um, sure. It's kind of kind of resilience. Now, have there ever been a moment in your career as an entrepreneur of self doubt? Um, I think there has been times where you know you you look back and you kind of go, "I just made it!" Like <laughs> by the skin of my teeth, right? <laughs> just in time. Um, uh, not to say that we don't have losses, but, you know, there have been some close calls. And uh, I think if I was really honest in certain uh, ventures, there's probably close calls going on right now. Um, but we just have to set goals, prioritize and, you know, figure out uh, what is the next step. And and we just kind of continually work through that that mantra to figure out you know what's going on and what we can learn from it. Yeah. What is the next step for Particle 41? Where do you see yourself hopefully succeed in the next five or 10 years? Yeah, we want to deploy experts everywhere. So we've launched um, uh, we've launched a CTO advisory service to help uh, folks that just want to get an extra audit or an extra set of eyes on um, their problems and their situation, help them uh, expand efficiency. Uh, we also have uh, just our super wide range of services. Uh, we work on a lot of different technologies. Uh, we have a VR team, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and a, a thriving DevOps team uh, that's just executed several uh, cloud migrations over the last uh, year or two. So um, we're really excited just to crush mountains of work and figure out how we can help folks uh, achieve their technical goals. Now, and who is who would you say is Particle Forty One's typical consumer? Who's who's kind of the who is your ideal customer? Yeah, so uh, I'm interested in having conversations with any CEO or CTO that has a $3 million to $100 million co- um, company. And uh, especially uh, looking at uh, security vendors uh, because they're finding remediations that need help with, maybe that's an opportunity for us to help out. And um, also just anyone that's trying to um, get into the cloud, understand the cloud in a bigger, broader way, uh, we're certainly here to help. And then for folks that are interested in learning more, where can they find you? Yeah, I met Ben at Particle 41, and uh, I would be happy to help you anytime. Um, also, you can go to my website at particle41.com, and I'm also on LinkedIn at Benjamin R. Johnson, uh, Benjamin R. Johnson at LinkedIn. Excellent. Excellent. Now, what about um, for folks that maybe are interested more about learning more about Particle 41 and maybe becoming a client, how do they get in contact with you from that? Just email me at Ben at, uh, at Particle 41 and we'll, we'll get you uh, squared away. Perfect. And so for the folks at home, all this information will be on the newsletter. We'll uh, check out the newsletter at theshadesofe.com. You can subscribe there. You can also follow us at the Shades of E on all the social sites. Uh, ben, is there anything else you'd like to say to the guests or the, the uh, listeners? 
Uh, no, I'm good. It's it great to be here, and thank you for having me on. Ben Johnson, the CEO of Particle 41, which probably one of the cooler names, uh, to be honest with you, but the, just the kind of the background. So, Ben, thank you again so much for being on the show. I really do appreciate it. Very interesting stuff. Um, I might have a few folks that probably send your way, to be honest with you. Uh, folks, uh, again, for those that are interested, please subscribe to The Shades of E on the podcast, uh, the Apple and Spotify. You can also find us at theshadesofe.com. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you for tuning in to The Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow The Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.